After putting in the angle adapter for the waste plumbing, we needed to patch that hole. I used a structural concrete patching compound to fill in the area around the pipe. I didn't want to waste any, so I only mixed up one bag, but I ended up needing them both. I scribed a few lines using the level and the laser level just to keep myself level and plumb when I start putting in the waterproofing. And then I use the rotary grinder and some 40 grit sandpaper flaps to abrade the surface to try and give it the best chance for adhesion. William Feathen patented the first mechanical shower in 1767. But showering has always existed since the first man found the first waterfall. The Greeks used intricate aqueducts of systems of lead pipes and had showering rooms with streams of cold water pouring in from above, as well as large common baths where people gathered and bathed several times a week. After the end of the Greek and Roman empires, these systems fell out of favor. But by the 18th century, bathtubs were the height of bathing sophistication, and Feetham developed his mechanical shower that pumped your bath water from the basin to a tank above you, and at the pull of a chain, it poured the water back down on you. It was the same water that you had just pumped up, and you were in charge of deciding whether or not it was too dirty to use again. In the early 1800s, Philadelphia became the first city to have cast iron plumbing systems for the transport of fresh water and the removal of sewage. And while indoor baths started to become available to its wealthiest citizens, it was by no means the norm. In fact, the White House didn't have running water until 1833. I am sure there are going to be people telling me lots of things I'm not doing right. And... All I can tell you is I've never done this before. I watched all the videos I could watch and then it's time to do it. That is a mess. Every step along the way was an advancement toward the modern household bathroom. But a strong argument can be made that the common man or woman owes credit for that development to the prisons and armies of Europe. In the later 19th century, in their never-ending effort to address sanitation and disease, the heated shower was brought into its own. And by 1870, the French were able to heat enough water in eight minutes from a steam engine to shower half a dozen prisoners. By the 1900s, showers started becoming commonly used in houses across America, but it still wasn't uncommon for rural houses to not have plumbing until the 1950s and 60s, and some European countries took just as long to catch on to this modern trend. It's a mess. Okay. Yeah. That's what I hear.
As indoor plumbing became common, so did water damage. While running water and heated showers are universally associated with a modern home, they bring a whole new set of problems that had to be addressed by industrious and enterprising craftsmen who tackled these problems with cast iron tubs and hot mop showers where they coated the entire shower system with hot tar to direct the water into a hidden drain with weep holes under the mortar and tile. And that system has been in use until the last decade or so when the sealed shower system started to emerge and revolutionize the industry. And that's what you see me using here today. If you're gonna do it yourself, this is a great time to be alive. Dry pack is an excellent way to fabricate a shower base. You use a sand and cement mixture that's about four to one. You can also get it in a pre-mixed 50 pound bag like I did. Then you shape it and you pack it any way that you need to to satisfy your needs. There's a wealth of information available about it online. The only thing that I didn't know is how much material I would need. If your drain flange is already even with the floor, you probably only need about a bucket or two. But my flange was already over an inch and a half up out of the ground, and I ended up using a lot more material than I planned to. A lot more. I'm not the right guy to tell you how to do this, but I can tell you that I did it, and I've never done this before. And if I can make it work, then you probably can too. If you're looking for a resource to teach you how to do this, there are lots of channels on YouTube. But if you only have time for one, I would say to go to Tile Coach. It is an absolute library of everything associated with building a shower. Well, it's been about 12 hours since I put this shower pan in, and I gotta tell you, it turned out pretty darn good. I'm looking at it, there's a little bit of imperfection in there, but all the edges are raised up above the drain. I've got the line that I wanted all along. Could it be better? Sure, it could be better. I could be a professional, but I'm not. This is the first one that I've ever done. So the way this turned out, I am tickled. I'm real happy. I feel confident that after I get a coating of hydroban on this thing, it is gonna be watertight and we're not gonna have any problems with leaks. I've gone ahead and given it three days for this shower pan to dry now. This is the first shower pan that I've ever done. It could be a little smoother, but I think it's going to be just fine. It's nice and hard. I've given it three days to cure. What I'm getting ready to do is paint some Laticrete Hydroban on it. And I'm going to coat the entire shower pan. And I'm going to come up about 10 inches on the walls, on the schluter, on the felt. I'm also going to hit all of the seams just to be doubly sure that there are no points of failure there. I'm going to start off by just basically painting this stuff in. I'm gonna straddle this curb so I don't put pressure on it. I'm sure it can handle it once I put the manufactured stone across it, but putting my knees on it with these hard plastic pads probably is not a great idea. And I wanna make sure that I get a really good coating on here and fill any void because I don't want to give an opportunity for water to penetrate through and cause a problem. I want to make 
sure that I've got enough for two really good coatings on the floor. And then next go around, after I make sure I get another coating on the floor, I'll do higher up on the total area of the shower where you're likely to have water hit. I'm also going to cut and tuck that in and make sure that's fully waterproof. I'm being very attentive to these seams because I had to fight with them a little bit and this is the first time I've ever done it and that's the place where it's likely to leak. That is one coat. There are little spots, you can see little pinholes there where the substrate was porous and it opened up. So I'm going to make sure that those get filled in and definitely closed. What do you want to do, huh? I bet I know what you want to do. You want to go. Well, yeah, he wants to go. An hour. All right, it is nighttime. I finished my work week and I am back on the build. I am in the shower. I have one dry cured coating and it looks to be very thin of that hydroban. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back here and put another coating on the base of it. Again, up to about 10, 12 inches. I'm gonna do that until I am satisfied that I have a good watertight coating on there. You can see all these little pinholes that opened up in it and any little void underneath. I'm gonna make sure that those are completely filled so I don't have any issues with water working its way down and out to the sides of the house, over to the OSB walls for the SIPS walls or over into the framing. I don't wanna have any issues like that. I wanna make sure that this is 100% watertight. And I definitely had too much water in my mix the first go around. When I do the other shower, I'm gonna make sure that I've got it all ready to go because I ended up using almost a full 150 on this one. Feels like I'm going a little thicker than I did last time too, but it's really hard to say. That bare dry pack and cement mixer mixture kind of ate up the material. So with a little bit of a coating on here, it seems to go further. Now, I'm not gonna pretend that I've got a absolutely gorgeous shower pan here. It's, a, it's got a little wave to it, but it is higher on the edges than it is in the center. And every, all the water will work its way to the center the way it's supposed to, so I know it'll work. Tomorrow when I come in here, I'll probably be putting another coat on it. Well, I need to open this niche up. Not good. How do I do that? To show what I'm dealing with here, I left a lot of slop there on the bottom. I put this thing together, so I pushed it off of here and grabbed that fabric quite a bit. I don't think it damaged it, but once I get this off, supposedly it's ready for tile. I'm going to put some of this liquid membrane on it anyway. I'm wondering about code. 
I think I should throw a couple of fish in there. It's fine. Mm-hmm. So you should think you uh, can throw a stool. But we don't see any crushes of water. No, this thing ain't Lincoln, baby. I ain't worried about this thing Lincoln. <laughs> Honey, I used. I waterproofed the heck out of this thing. It should not leak. We should we should get years of good service out of this thing without any problems. So, do we need to stand up above there or we don't know yet? Up at the top? Yeah. Yeah, just sand lightly and paint it. Okay. It's not a problem. Okay. It won't show. What I do need to do though is I do need to waterproof past this point okay. and about six eight inches past that point that is not required for this test we need to get the test done so we can start throwing tile down So we've got an inspection scheduled for tomorrow. Oof, that thing is the wavelength of that LED light. Lauren painted this hallway today. Lots of folks asking how Lauren's doing. She's doing very well. She's in here painting. She's pitching in where she can. She gets a little rest. She works, she gets a little rest. So this is the bathroom, the full bathroom, guest bathroom, and Still need to prime and paint the ceiling, but Jafana just put a coat of paint on the walls. Looking pretty good. We've got water in the shower pan for the flood test. That'll be done tomorrow. This is the spare bedroom. Which is about 12 by 11, 12 by 12. Not a very big room, but big enough. Because we've been doing this at night, so it's, yeah, I need yeah. to go back here during the day. And... I see a few. Yeah, <laughs> hey, hey, you. I can say it, but you can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I... Well, we had the inspection today. Passed just fine. As you can see, the water is still there. The water level is fine. All right. So what I'm getting ready to do is open it up. I didn't even take the time to... Let the water out earlier. Well, it's watertight and it certainly drains well. So no issues there. Japana was in here painting yesterday. She got a good portion of the bathroom painted. She'll probably still be working on that today. I'm gonna to put my tile saw together because this weekend is gonna be a tile party. 